We would like to invite the Sangha to enjoy three sounds of the bell so we can come back to ourselves and together we, we breathe as a Sangha. Namo Shakyamuna Buddhaya, dear respected teacher, dear respected brothers, sisters, and, and the community, beloved community. Can you hear me well? Today, July 30th, mm, the year of 2023, um, we are in California's monastery of Deer Park, um, med Ocean of Peace Meditation Hall. Uh, today is the fifth Sunday, the last week of July. We are, I'm very happy to see everyone coming back to practice with the Fofo Sangha. Today, I'm able to be able to sit in the present moment, to be in the present moment, and I see I'm so lucky to be surrounded by the Sangha. And I was lucky to be born as a human, to touch the, the nectar of the Dharma. And I see that you're all coming here to touch, to taste that nectar of the Dharma. So I can sense everybody's happiness, uh, and I'm so happy. Did you all see how beautiful Deer Park is? Did you have peace while, during the walking meditation? Mm. The Mother Earth has given us so many wonderful conditions this year. We have a lot of rains, and um, thanks to the rains that we had many springs flowing down, the water f and rain and spring, and the flowers are everywhere. Also, um, uh, yeah, it looks like a, a, a very um, popular uh, Vietnamese phoenix uh, kind of flowers blooming in the summer. You see the the yellow uh, flowers, like we are all carpeted by these flowers petals. Um, so I remember of, of a Jetta Vena, Jetta Grove uh, by Ananta Pindika. Um, when he invited the Buddha in the original time of the Buddha, he invited this. Um, he he invited the Buddha to come to uh, Kosala, um, and he asked um, to uh, uh, the prince um, to to um, to grant um, the. Jatavana for a monastery for um, the Buddha and the prince um, 
um, didn't know how rich this merchant um, was to ask to buy this, and he challenged him to place um, as much, fill up the whole garden grove, uh, the Jeddah grove with with gold pieces and he can sell it to this merchant so he was able to to purchase this piece of land for the Buddhas and these days I felt like I was walking in the Buddha's um, Jatavana you know the land of the um, monastery back then in the Buddha's time I see your happiness and isn't that true I've in the recent time I was able to attend the funeral uh, ceremonies twice uh, uh, to be present for those uh, wonderful friends of, of Deer Park who took, um, uh, who left, or uh, took their last breath. And these are the wonderful friends of Deer Park. Um, when they departed from this life, we were able to attend their funeral ceremonies. Uh, in the recent, um, in this month of July, I have also encountered hospital experience when I brought my own mother to emergency room. When I was there with my own mother, I have experienced, um, I've seen so many uh, sick uh, people and we didn't have enough uh, rooms in the emergency room uh, for them to lay down or to sit. So uh, the staff, the healthcare providers had to provide many seats. Uh, uh, chairs outside of the hall um, for uh, all, ca- all ages uh, of population of illness um, from children to old age. Um, so sickness uh, does um, come to all of us. So this sharing today, therefore, will be focusing on the five remembrances uh, to to recognize and transform the seeds of fear. And so many of us here have been um, chanting a lot already, so you know what these are these five remembrances to remind us, um, I, uh, although you already knew, I would like to still um, take a moment to write them down and list them for you so it be more convenient for you to look and to re- contemplate. Dear Sangha, could you please, um, uh, if any of you could help me, what are the five? The first of the five is what? I'm of the nature to grow old. Somebody remind it. The first of the five, I'm of the nature to grow old. There is no way to escape growing old.
điều thứ hai ạ? What's the second one? Yeah. Hay quá. I'm of the nature to have ill health. Không thể nào tránh thoát được cái bệnh. There's no way to escape having ill health. Điều thứ ba. The third. I'm of the nature to die. Tôi không thể nào, tôi thế nào cũng phải chết. Tôi không thể nào tránh thoát được cái chết. I'm of the nature to die. There's no way to escape death. Dạ, điều thứ tư. The fourth remembrance, all that is dear to me and everyone I love are of the nature to change. There's no way to escape being separated from them. Và tất cả những gì tôi chân quý Hôm nay Tôi đều phải xa lìa và buông bỏ. Tôi không thể nào tránh thoát được. Tôi không thể nào tránh thoát được. All that is dear to me and everyone I love are of the nature to change. There's no way to escape being separated from them. The fifth Remembrance. Số so, năm. À, tôi là kẻ thừa. Tôi là kẻ thừa tự những nghiệp quả do thân miệng và ý của tôi tạo nên và những nghiệp quả ấy là cái duy nhất tôi có thể mang theo với tôi sau này. The fifth remembrance is I inherit the results of my actions of body, speech, and mind. My actions are my continuation.
So these are the five remembrances for us to recognize and transform the seeds of fear. She finished writing down the five remembrances. So the first is just reminding us, I am the nature to grow old. There is no way to escape growing old. Second, I am of the nature to have ill health. There is no way to escape having ill health. Uh, third, I am of the nature to die. There is no way to escape death. Fourth, all that is dear to me and everyone I love and cherish are of the nature to change. There's no way to escape being separated from them. Fifth, I inherit the results of my actions of body, speech, and mind. My actions are my continuation. We, we, we all know all this. First, we have to grow old from the time we were born. I would like to historically um, uh, to draw this historical line of time, this line of the historical time. We all have the perception that. Uh, on this line of the historical time of our life of a hundred years of age and from the very beginning of that line on the left is when we first started at birth and midlife 50 end of life at 100 about and so 25 50, 75 and 100 years so from the time of birth uh, we grow continuously to 25, 50 years of age, and if, uh, some days we reach to 75 years of age or 100. When our body reaches old, old, old age, is uh, determined by the law of nature. To, to the progress of, of the creation, we will pass by um, these points in time of birth and death. So this is, this is all the non-being and beings and um, earth and life and end of life born birth and manifestation and disintegration and, and disintegration. So from the time of birth and getting old and then ill, um, sick and passed away, um, so all the anim realms of animals and other beings, they do go through this progress. So they go through these stages of born, of birth, manifestation, and changing, and, um, and disintegration as well. So other words, um, worlds too, from born, from birth, and manifestation and unmanifestation and destruction and all of this, all dharmas, everything in the world uh, goes through goes through these four stages of of. Um, so we we cannot escape from these four stages. Uh, we are we cannot escape of growing old. We have to go through this stage of growing old. So because this is the truth, that we cannot escape from growing old. So we must accept that. Um, so we understand when we get old. 
Um, so we understand everything in in our manifestation from mind to the body w o u l d change continuously. Um, um, we definitely change internally. So the youth, the young, will be more active, but the older we get, the less active we become, and we just have to accept that. And and. I would like to share with you from the stories of the O Path in the book O Path White Clouds by our teacher, and in this one particular part by by the King Pasadena, Pasanadi, from the kingdom of Kosala, coming to the place where the Buddha was, he addressed the Buddha that, "Dear respected teacher, this year I'm reaching." The age seventy years of age, and I understand that I have to focus on the spiritual learning. But from busy work every day in the palace um, in my kingdom, I was wasn't able to focus on my study spiritually. So when I attended your teaching and your Dharma talk, I often fell asleep. Um, so I felt really embarrassed. And the king, um, the Buddha, responded that um, your understanding and your recognition uh, is right. Um, perhaps um, I would like to focus. Um, you can focus more on your spiritual dimension and and learning. Uh, I would like to share. The Buddha said to the king, p a s s i n a d i is the story of the four mountains um, uh, coming, a um, uh, closing in on us um, from the east, the west, and the north, the south. And these these mountains are humongous, incredibly large. And wherever these mountains and um, and circling your palace, and if that suppose the mountains approaching your kingdom, always oh, humongous, it's, it's gonna crush uh, everything and every being in their way, in their path. And so, what would you be doing when you hear the news of these humongous, um, immense mountains coming, approaching your kingdom, and with your worries and everything? Um, and why you still worry? Um, your 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 uh, advisors and all these uh, news coming to you from. The, of the mountains uh, from all direction, four directions, the west, the north, the east, the south, and everything. So, what would you be doing then? Why are you worry? Uh, so, the king Pas s e n a d i said, "I then have to really. I realize I need to spend my the rest of remind, remaining days um, to focus on my studying and learning to generate." Um, Um, calm and peace. And now the Buddha asked the king, "What do you understand? Do you know these four mountains represent? They represent all the dharmas in our life, in our nature of life. Is the four mountains of birth, of old age, and sick, and death." And all humans, humanity, and all species in this world, um, according to the nature, the law of nature, no one of us and none of the beings and non-beings can escape from these four stages of their of of, of the life of their life. So you see. Um, ten years from now, twenty years from now, we will be twenty years older, and so each time we get older and older. So you see, the the King Pasinadi 
recognize that he has reached 70 years of age, so he has to remind himself to focus on spiritual dimension. Same thing with me as I'm talking right now. I am already at the age of 75. So in only 25 more years, perhaps, I will become all dust. But who knows? Maybe tonight, uh, I may not even get up tomorrow, so so nothing is ensured. So you can none of the things in life that we can be sure of the near future or far future. How can we be sure we're going to live to 100 years of age? But one thing you know for sure is that we're going to be we're going to be getting sick. Previously, we all have watched, um, we have uh, watched uh, a con, uh, um, um, complimentary uh, movie with my uh, with the young uh, in the, the teens camp or teen teens. Um, so uh, we have, as a community, watched the co uh, commentary or the videos and the clips about um, the current time in society for the teens and for the youth. Um, the young generation now, now nowadays um, uh, are facing a lot of stress and their illness, uh, mental um, distress. None of us uh, sits here without any illness, without any sickness. Um, it could be critical or non-critical, but how, how we accept? and embrace our illness and our, not, uh, our ill health. And our ill health can approach us uh, abruptly, surprisingly, recently, as I already mentioned, we have attended the funeral ceremonies um, for our dear friends, dear Park, passed away and transition, and we were very touched to be there attend um, this, the ceremony to celebrate their life, to visit them. We were all surprised. Oh, for one of, um, and, and recently also, a very dear friend of, our, our, of us um, uh, had been sick and had been um, experiencing um, a hemorrhagic um, stroke. Um, so she luckily overcame uh, because uh, post-surgery, they were able to save and help her heal. And another story I, I would like to share. Um, another friend, uh, even though now that I'm a nun, but we used to practice in the same sangha, and he he's um, I do I still address him as the elder brother. And, he, and when we came visit uh, our friend who was critically ill, and his wife said, oh, dear one, uh, you can open your eyes to see who's visiting you. And he recognized me. He called out my name, my monastic name. And he used to be a poet. And so I said to him, uh, please um, continue to be well so you can resume your writing. Oh, but dear sisters, uh, um, he, he invoked the name of the Buddha. He said, uh, I'm really similar to our teacher. He reminded me. So then I didn't understand, but late, shortly after I realized he could only bow one hand. He used the one hand, one right hand or left hand instead of joining both. And he said, um, I nowadays don't write poems. I don't do any writings. Um, each, But nowadays, I, all I do is to write the name of the Buddha, I invoke the names of the Buddha, of Amatabha Buddha. And so... so 
So we chanted. We were all the monastics surrounding him and chanting for, for our friend, um, the, um, the, the famous chant uh, of all times for him. He loves this chant. So we chant the Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara holding um, on her hand and his hand the vase of nectar, the, the nectar of the Dharma. So that our death um, cannot be predicted, cannot be anticipated, and none of us knows when our death will come, knock at our door, knock on our door for us, um, but it comes um, unexpectedly. But this very truth needs to be contemplated and contemplated most by all of us. Everyone I love and cherish, uh, now, uh, soon, I will have to be separated from. That is another truth. When we were first born, we, we, were, we didn't have any baggage. We had nothing with us. We came to the world empty-handed. Uh, can you give, can any of you give me an example or tell me what did you bring with you the first moment you 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 were born. You came to this world. Nothing we came. Nothing came with us when we came out of our mother, right? Materialistically. Did we bring anything with us materialistically? Perhaps one thing, but I can discuss later. One thing we did come with, uh, came with us when our mother brought us to this world with the first cry. Uh, we, we had nothing on our body then we we weren't able we weren't able to carry anything with us then tell me what did you really bring with you when the on the dying bed um the when we and make the transition to depart from this world. Tell me one one thing that you bring with you. You put nothing, right? Nothing you can bring with you materialistic, materialistically. Even though, although, um, despite the fact that your love, your beloved ones. You brought, put in your coffin with you. Um, they can bring lots of wonderful yeah, your treasures with you, but it eventually be cremated and nothing you can really take with you. I would like to share with you the story before this king uh, passed away. He called on all of his um, queens and concubines. Um, he, in the old days, um, all the emperors had uh, 3,000 uh, concubines or something. I read in a story. So he called all these beautiful ladies of his of his life, the wife and concubines, um, and 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 uh, have them come uh, surrounding him at the moment of death, and he asked them, "Any of you are beautiful ones coming with me?" So he called the 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 first wife. The first lady, um, and so he addressed her, saying that in my life I love you the most. Now would you like to come with me? And here her response is that, dear beloved king, um, the most beloved king, emperor, I really love you uh, dearly, but I cannot come with you. Uh, to your coffin, I now the most that I love the most right now is my my form, my body that I have to love to 
Sorry, I cannot come with you. That's her response from the first wife, uh, first queen. Um, then so he called the next, um, the, the vice, um, the, the next wife represents um, the fame and wealth. The first wife represents health. I remember, um, and the second wife represents fame, wealth, and her response is the same as the first, saying that, no, I'm sorry, I cannot come with you from the, the first to the last of the wife. And eventually there's one, because 3,000 um, young uh, wives of his, so he cannot, in his life, he this particular one, he never paid attention during his lifetime. So the last question, after repetitively receiving no answer from all the wives, so this one, this particular last one responded to him. So dear respect, dear, 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 Honor King, um, I know in your life you have never paid attention to me, but but yes, wherever you go, I will escort, I will come with you. Uh, this is the last queen, or, I mean the last um, wife said to the king, wherever you go, I will come. And this one, this the last one represented her karma. No, represents karma. The first was the health, the second was fame and wealth, the third is or um or the roles in the society and the last represents the karma. I would like to illustrate through this diagram. Just gonna just illustrate from the time of birth. Um, we didn't have anything, and as we grow older, we end up accumulating the material wealth, like house, cars, children. And what else? Fame. So the the left arm of the diagram, I I listed out all the material materialistic uh, belongings, and on the right, and the spiritual um, spiritual belongings on the right. Anyway, on the left, yeah. uh, all the Both things lines. or diamonds or whatever, yeah. all the material. So this is very interesting from the from the sanghas shouting out uh, one of the material yeah. belongings is jewelries, treasures, yeah. diamonds, um, other jewelries. Uh, we have what else? We have a lot. It's like uncountable. We have also debt. Uh, you bar it um, uncountable. It's a um, amount of material belongings including debts um, and now on this right side 
poorness, uh, psychological, mental belongings uh, yeah. that arise, uh, such as sadness, anger. And what else? So many out there. This is just a representation um, drawing the left arm with innumerable listings. Uh, we carry only we carry these things. We accumulate these belongings only after we were born, after our birth, all the way till our death. And you see she's drawing to a point that these belongings will make um, our shoulders bend, bend and our legs uh, uh, collapse, uh, our hands are pulling down. I mean, all these heavy belongings pulling us down. But certainly, we surely um, won't let go. We still carry, we still, we never could let go, even though the fact is that they are so heavily pulling us. And we continue to pull, <laughs> to carry to a point. We became until the moment, until death. We become de uh, or dust. Um, so how how suddenly to death that we can let go? We must practice from now on to then, uh, little by little, day by day. We can let go a little bit each day. Although in the beginning it may be difficult, but slowly we train ourselves, we will be able to do so. Before I became a nun, in my shoe rack, although I don't have 300 pairs, uh, like one of those first ladies in Africa to have, but I still had a lot, not, not 300 pairs, but a lot. Um, I decided before ordination I have to let go of those shoes and the very shoes that I never able I, I never got to put my feet in they, they were brand new so I have to put, let go and bring it to goodwill um, to, to 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 completely uh, let go mm. so we tended to I also tended to want to have just so to have like everyone else like my friends my relatives whatever they have uh, so you see how many pairs ten hundred or thousand it depends but, uh, you know, the fact is that we only need one, but we always want many just to be fitting in, to be uh, not um, left out. If uh, my sisters or my friends, relatives have BMWs, uh, I also want to own one, uh, Mercedes Benz, the same thing, just to show off, just to be like everyone else. Um, fear of missing out and therefore we just like to be the same in the society but but face the truth is that whatever car it doesn't have to be a classic um classy ones um the brand name ones to be uh, to be fancy, all we need is just a car to get us from one place to another to work. But, but certainly, because uh, human nature, we have tendency to to be to want to be respected and to be noticed and recognized and to fit in. This. So everything we treasure tonight, today, will be we will part from them in the near future or someday in the future. We know that for sure. When we we breathe 
we take our last breath, we certainly know we cannot bring anything with us. We know that, and we know for sure the one thing we can carry with us uh, when we take our last breath is our karma. So the things that she wrote, they are listed there, um, form, well, and karma but in the Buddhist teaching according to the Buddhist teaching the more we practice and train ourselves um, with the, more, the more we are able to transform to change the karma karma of, of speech, thought and action um, according to the Buddhist teaching, we have um, um, the, the karmic um, energy at the moment of death. At the moment of death, if we give rise to the wholesome mind, a wholesome thought, or unwholesome thoughts, it's determined that right there and then the last moment of our life is really powerful kind of energy of karma. It's a karmic uh, realm um, that may lead us to uh, beyond um, the three things. Um, at the moment of transition, the three things, um, if we know that we are near death, um, we need to focus on these three things. On or contemplate on these three things and, and to avoid these three things is to be angry the first is anger second is um hatred um, or, and the third is um, longing uh, of uh, longing for uh, for our beloved our children and our wealth those are the three things um, first is anger second is holding um, anguish hatred thoughts Third is holding on to our belongings. So before our death, if any of the mental formations and thoughts that rise in, that rises with this one of these three, um, we try we try our best to invite another thought, a wholesome thought, um, to compensate and to balance because if we focus and if we are uh, f concentrated in these th one of these three um, things, thoughts, um, holding grudge, the second, that's the second thing of the third. So before we make, uh, we take our last breath and, and transition, we make sure we try to, to forgive and 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 not to hold hold on to grudges and I don't know if you, if any of you have read uh, stories are like uh, classic um, stories of, of of this author Kim Jong uh, many uh, stories regarding many um, um, uh, like. Um, Stories regarding the cycles of uh, paying debts and paying, um, um, so it's continuously like if some from generation to the next generation, for their enemies to be uh, punished um, by the later generation, um, repay the debts of their previous generation by by. Um, Re, by killing uh, the ones who caused their previous generation's death. So it's sort of like um, 
uh, we have to forgive, uh, either forgive uh, or the other person came to um, ask forgiveness, we must let go of the of the grudge and the pain um, of the what we so call enemy. So we need to let go of that very thought before we take our last breath. And the third thing is our beloved, especially children, is the hardest part of the belonging that to learn to let go. And the hardest part to let go is the children is next is the grandchildren and the great grandchildren. If we are not able to boom to let go at the moment of death mm, will continue to carry further if we are not successfully let go. Um, another thing is uh, wealth is hard to let go too, perhaps. One of the stories now, one of the uh, patriarchs uh, of uh, the Buddhist um, teachings uh, in, from the India, one time on an uh, arms round to the neighboring house, and the dog came out, ran after this um, this this um, monk. Uh, Uh, so the, per, the monk said, the dog, like, um, um, why, uh, why did you, mm, you became, the karmic energy took, became, uh, took you to become an, uh, a dog, um, uh, you, you guarding your wealth. And so now you came out and barked. And so after the monk said that, the dog became sad. Um, the Buddha, um, the monk said the Buddha something. Uh, said, uh, the, the monk said something to the dog, and the dog became really melancholic. And um, and the owner came home, didn't know why the dog um, was so sad. And the neighbors told the story of this uh, big shoe monk um, who came uh, arms round, said something to the dog, and that's why the dog became sad. And so the owner came to find out and shout uh, at the venerable monk, said, what did you say? Why on your arms round when begging for food? Why did you go scold at my dog and make my dog sad? And the venerable monk said, dear one, do you know that the dog is your father? The dog has been your father. Your dog is your father. How dare you, venerable monk, uh, as a monk saying that, how dare you to say the dog is my father? So the venerable monk said, if you don't believe me, you can come home and you can you can uh, shovel up um, uh, the, the ground. Uh, you can dig the hole from underground where the, your dog um, uh, laid um, and you will find the tree your box underneath um, so so the monk said um, be, the dog is your father before your father passed away he had buried a big box of treasure underground right there on that very spot and he didn't get to tell his beloved um, about the location of that treasure so the dog grew and became a dog um, the, the, the father your father uh, had going through this karmic cycle to become a dog in order to guard that very spot. So that why the dog, when he saw the monk walk by, he's barking because he's been guarding. He's been guarding that, that spot is where the father of this owner of the dog used to guard that box of that treasure. Um, So the owner followed the direction and came home and digged it up, dug up this box of treasure. So he did find whatever the monk said is the truth. Um, so he carried that treasure box to find that same venerable monks to say, could you please help my father to transcend and to overcome 
And if you know this, the truth, the monk said to the owner, if you know this truth and you learn the teaching, perhaps you can, he advised the owner to take this treasure box uh, to spread out all the wealth, the jewels in the treasure box for the neighboring friends and the poor and to, 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 to share the merit so that his very father can be transcendent, uh, trans, can transcend and can transform and can, um, can transcend his own karma. I would like to invite one sound, to ask to invite one sound at the bell so we, we all can breathe. So due to this karmic energy, the calm, the karmic energy is never get never gets lost. If it is unwholesome action we have done, um, it, we will rip the 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 fruit of of unwholesome action. So and if it's wholesome, we will reap the fruit of our wholesome acts in uh, during our lifetime. So our the, it will be continue. Uh, it's a cycle of birth and death. These cycles of samsara, of mm, birth and death. So four understandings. Uh, there is four understandings. Um, uh, for, man, for, for manifestations from the time we were uh, so these four stages uh, from the moment of manifestation as a being you know in our uh, of our existence so four so the minute we take our last breath and we pa we are gonna pass through this phase between our last breath, um, and some uh, some theory said within seven days, within or the others say within fourteen days, right after our death, uh, seven fourteen, and some theory say forty nine. So you can see the period of seven as for this body during this stage of forty nine days after death. Um, so some theories said seven days. Um, it's seven days period. Uh, so seven periods of seven makes it makes it forty nine. So this very critical stage right after birth, after death, uh, before they take another form of their existence. So some may take seven days to re manifest um, or other, but. The whole during the whole forty nine days is the period where where one is able to 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 re manifest to take on another form, so is consider um, the the stage of of re manifestation, and so you see, so after re manifestation takes place. Uh, it's another phase to get 
back into the life of being a human or being um, another being uh, in the animal realms. So there is so so another take on another lifetime uh, of either human or in a human realm or in an animal realm. So in this remanifestation phase again, so we we will um, penetrate back um, uh, in, uh, to the the mother's womb from zero from zero to nine nine months ten days. So for the gestational stage in the mother's womb. So that's why in Asian culture, a lot of time they don't they count their age, starting from zero hour uh, until nine months or uh, the time we were born. So we have to start counting the moment we enter the mother's womb. It's not the time we we're born to really starting count to, to count our age, you see. So for me, like 74 years of age and legally, but I'm really 75 because you count nine months, 10 days in the mother's, my mother's womb. So from the time of birth to the time of majority uh, of, uh, so from the, so that from this stage of, uh, it's another, it's called the third stage from the time of birth to, to being grown up. It's your lifespan, it could be 20, 30, 40, or 100 years. That is an existence of our existence, even though our existence was based on uh, many previous lifetimes, karmic energy, but still during this lifetime of, of manifestation of our uh, existence uh, in the physical realm, in the historical realm, is the very stage where we can learn to to, to transform and to to train and and to train ourselves to 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 generate enough wholesome and this is a countless is innumerable samsaric cycles birth and death unmanifestation remanifestation and and cycles nonstop. But Buddha, according to Buddha teachings, we can bring it to a stop instead of like a vicious cycle like so of samsara. And so the Bu in the Buddha's teachings is this is the way for you to bring um, many um, teachings that, that we we continue to practice we will we continue to 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 practice um, we will overcome both and death in the end if we uh, diligently and wholeheartedly continuously um, put it into the practice uh, um, and there was a saying uh, if you continuously with your diligent practice this, um, it could be within seven years, six years, seven, ye uh, seven years, six, five years, four years, one year. Um, you can reach that non, no birth, no death stage. Um, and then next they said more encouraging words that like if you continue and truly diligent, you can, you don't even need seven years or even one year, you can have one month. Um, one month you could even overcome both in death. And the next encouragement is like if you even more serious, you can even you don't even need one month, you can only need one week or even one day. Um, you can reach that stage uh, of, of of no birth, no death. Um, there they they have proven to us that it, it is a possibility only if we are willing to practice wholeheartedly and diligently. I'm a bit over, uh, over time. 
in my sharing. So I have focused um, on a lot on birth and, and death. Uh, perhaps you are getting sick of this idea or tired uh, of this sharing. You, you may feel like um, nothing much there is only birth and death. But to balance this talk, I would like to sh to offer you something positive, or uh, some some so uh, the song. I I change the lyrics and I keep the melodies from this um, most popular uh, poet of all times, called Trinh Công Sơn in Vietnamese uh, in Vietnamese culture. Uh, a renowned poet uh, and com song composer, and I've changed some lyrics to to fit in with our life at Deer Park. After our range retreat, one year I sat behind our teacher's hut and to uh, mes be mesmerized by all these uh, spring and the greens and the rains and the water. And is I was inspired to change the lyrics of that one of the most renowned poets of all time in Vietnam, Trinh Công Sơn. I said every day we, we choose something to be happy. And I would like to offer this song, these lyrics uh, to the to the young, uh, newly, um, <laughs> the new arriving mothers to be, the mothers to be. So I would like to read first for the translator. Each day I choose a condition to be happy, to hear, to listen to the birds singing, and I want, I realize I don't need to find anything else. The happiness is so real and so true right here and right now, and it doesn't need any other the conditions it does is simply as simply um, simple conditions each day I I have one more day of happiness to listen to the creeks the the streams and I I realized I can let go just like the water flowing down. Uh, it's just because we're so busy, so we accumulate a lot of thinkings and calculations and worries. So that's the very reason why we no longer uh, realize of happiness because of we we caught by busyness. Um, but if you recognize the stream of water, the creek, the water flowing by, you can just let go. You can just let go like the river, like the water. So I add each day I have condition for happiness and to wash the clothes for the children and cook for the husband. This is to 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 honor the new mother, the mother to be, all the mothers out there uh, and the mothers to be. So many of the Vietnamese ladies here, you could help me. This song everyone seems to know, and that is is how I, I carry on my life and carry on my each and every day. And that's how I continue to live happily. So can you can sing along with me, please, if you know the song. Mỗi ngày tôi được một ngày vui Nghe tiếng chim ca siêu dít trên cành Tôi chợt thấy răng Tìm đâu chi nữa Hạnh phúc bây giờ và ở đây 
mỗi ngày tôi được một ngày vui ngồi ngắm xuôi reo lượn quanh sau nhà tôi chợt thấy rằng thả trôi như nước bất cứ chuyện gì rồi cũng qua và như thế tôi sống vui từng ngày và như thế tôi đến trong cuộc đời đã yêu cuộc đời này bằng trái tim của tôi bây giờ hát tặng bà quý bà mẹ nhé mỗi ngày tôi được một ngày vui giặt áo cho con nấu cơm cho chồng để cùng để xây hạnh phúc mái ấm gia đình đầy hiểu thương và như thế tôi sống vui từng ngày và như thế tôi đến trong cuộc đời đã yêu cuộc đời này bằng trái tim của tôi à, con xin con hát tặng mẹ con một đoạn để vinh danh người mẹ hết lòng cho các con của con, của con mỗi ngày tôi được một ngày vui chăm sóc mẹ yêu gần gũi mỗi ngày Tuy rằng như vậy vẫn chưa um, đền đáp được hết tấm lòng của mẹ yêu. Cái này con xin hát tặng mẹ. Mỗi ngày tôi được một ngày vui. Săn sóc mẹ tôi, chăm sóc từng ngày. Tuy rằng như vậy, vẫn chưa đến đáp được những ân tình của mẹ tôi. Và như thế, tôi sống vui từng ngày và như thế tôi đến trong cuộc đời đã yêu cuộc đời này bằng trái tim của tôi đã yêu cuộc đời này bằng trái tim của tôi The speaker is smiling <laughs> and she wishes everyone practice um, practicing joyfully um, and please come back to Deer Park after the U.S. tours, after the U.S. tour. So next week, um, the brothers and sisters, all the monks and nuns will close the Deer Park because they have to go on U.S. tour. So beginning of October, so we would like Deer Park would like to invite you back to practice with the four, with us all, and Deer Park is always open 24/7 uh, for everyone of you to come back and practice joyfully with us. Mm -hmm.